hello. I have had a ton of requests asking me to do a video on how I process my photos. And I've been sort of putting this off because it's quite a complicated thing because basically it's different every time, depending on what kind of job I'm doing and what the photo looks like. But over time I have made a range of presets that I commonly use, or at least I commonly use as starting points, where I've been kind of tweaking the RGB curves, the camera calibration, the split toning, etc. I've got them to a point where I'm pretty happy with them. So I thought what I'd do is I'd make them into a downloadable package so that you can use them. And I'm gonna put a link in the description to where you can get these. I'm gonna charge just a small fee for them because I have spent years working on them basically. Um, it's not very much, but it's, I don't want to give them away for free. Um, so I'm now going to show you kind of how to install them and how I would work with them. So let's get on with it. When you get the preset, uh, it will appear to you as a zip file. What you need to do is unzip that file. And then you'll get a folder with these presets in. Now to install them, go into Lightroom and go to your preferences, go to presets, show Lightroom presets folder. In the Lightroom presets folder you'll have one called develop presets. Click that and simply drag the JW presets into your develop presets folder. And what you'll need to do now is restart Lightroom and everything should be good. So we have our presets now here in the presets panel in the develop module and I've got a load of photos here, some from Pentax, some from Canon, some from Fuji, just to sort of show these kind of work across the board. And I'll show you what I use these for. So we'll start off with the commercial ones. That's a relatively dull photo there. Add punch basically just does what it says on the tin, just gives it a bit of a boost. I use this if I want minimal editing, but a bit more punch and contrast and brightness. Now architecture. I'm going to push the exposure up here a bit. Now this one is based on commercial photographers, like people like Lee Maudsley. People who shoot a lot more buildings than people. It brings out details and sharpens everything up. And it creates a sort of smooth roll off curve in the lighter part of the image, giving you a sort of wider dynamic range, but without losing contrast. I tend to use this for most corporate jobs, like things like interiors, stuff like that, any buildings. So I'll just run that on a few things here. Uh, this shot of the Barbican might be a good one to use. Now I'm just gonna transform this just architecture. Just kind of brings out all those details. It doesn't look too overly processed, but it's clear that something's been done to it. So let's move on to the film. Now, I learned on film back in the 90s, digital cameras weren't really around. I'd spend my time in the dark rooms and I've taken sort of a few of my favorite film stocks. I'm not really sure how accurate they'll be as there's so much that can affect the look of film from the light when you shoot it to the processing of the negatives to exposing of the images. But from personal experience, this is what I remember. And I've tried to retain that kind of softness that film has, which other film emulation presets on the market seem to lack. And it's not a bad thing. It's, it's different from being sort of out of focus or a lens being soft. It's a different look, but you can always change it in Lightroom if you don't like it. That's the beauty of digital. So let's have a look at these film stocks. So let's pick a photo, maybe this one over here. Okay, so. I'm going to start off with um, Agfa Scala. Now this was always one of my favourite stocks. Uh, a lot of people these days seem to put too much emphasis on sort of like the high contrast black and white, like loads of black, loads of white and not much in the middle. But I like to have a lot of kind of grey in there. If that feels more filmic to me, I find this stock always had that for me. So I've tried to kind of recreate that look. Oh, by the way, I've also, also put like an add border thing here. So if you just want to add a border like that, can do that. So let's look at Agfa on some other ones. Uh, take this, this is uh, Rob. I shot his wedding. Um, he's, uh, he's in a band called Pulled Apart by Horses. He's the bassist. They're crazy metal. So if you like crazy metal, check them out. So that looks filmic to me, but it looks filmic in the way I really remember film and not the way people just add a load of grains and seem to sort of pass that off as looking like film, but film didn't really look like that. Okay, ah, photo on the tube, artificial lighting, um, high ISO. Let's have a look at this. 
Yeah, that looks nice. That looks good. And if I have a shot with a load of bright colors in, it deals with it quite nicely. So yeah, that really is probably my favorite black and white stock. Now HP5, Ilford HP5, I shot a lot with that back in the day. Not the biggest fan of this, but I've got a lot of experience with it. So I thought I'd do a couple of versions. It has a kind of a grainy kind of look to it like this. I've got two versions, this one and this one, which is a bit more faded. This is how I sort of remember it coming out. Um, yeah, not gonna spend too long on this one. Yeah. Now let's look at the colors. I've called this C41 um, because uh, C41 processing was what Kodak called their color processing. And it's the most common form of color processing from the 1970s onwards. So a lot of times I'll just use this kind of contrast only. And what this does is it, it tweaks the color very, it's not actually just contrast only, it tweaks the colors very slightly, but it doesn't put too much of a crazy kind of film look to it. So if I put this on here, just gives it a little bit of more of a filmic kind of contrast. This is often like the starting point I'll use for images. Um, let's do more of a studio shot. Let's try the contrast only. There we go. And what if we were to take this shot? We've got some chromatic aberration there. Let's get rid of that. Lens correction. Let's defringe that. I love that you can do this. A bit there and a bit of green. There we go. Sorted. Check that out. So um, contrast only. Just gives it a nice little boost. Let's go and do that because I want to use that image again later. Contrast only. There we go. You can see there how the color has shifted slightly. So there's a little bit of tweaking of the color, but it's mainly just adding that kind of filmic curve. Now, Coda Color Gold. This is a consumer film. Um, I remember a lot from my childhood. It's it's not a great. <laughs> film but um, I just remember using it a lot so just trying to sort of mimic the look of that. Some bell ringers here, let's run that. There we go. Let's have a look at it on the flowers. Let's run the code of colour gold. There we go. I think if you compare that to sort of the contrast only you can really see kind of how that differs. Ah, now Ektar, Ektar 100. Ektar was always one of my favorites because it always gave a really nice clean image. Um, and I found that the 100 ASA, or ISO as it's called now, um, was almost preferable to the, the 25 which they did. I just liked the way the colors came out a bit more. It seemed a bit more authentic and it had a slightly kind of pinky hue to it, but only very slight. And I'll show you the Ektar here. Again, that, the pinks have really come out in that one. Might come out less here. But I've tried to kind of um, retain that sort of softness that film had, that get rid of that sort of digital sharpness. Let's try out one of the Fujis. This is a Fuji shot. So the Ektar gives you that. There we go. It's quite, it's quite a big difference. Um, just just looks like film to me now. That looks like a sort of filmic portrait. So let's look at the next one. I'm going to look at uh, portrait. I've got two portraits, um, ASA 160 and 400. When I used them, they had slightly different color casts, but that's probably not a universal thing. But let's just see how that looks. So here we go with this one. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I'm going to show you both of these. So that's the 160. That's the 400 and let's look at that on a more sort of studio-y shot. 160, looks very filmic. Um, a bit too lo-fi for this really. I'd say you want to go with like contrast only for that. So this shot, he's a bit underexposed. How's that going to work on this? Uh, again, a little bit too lo-fi. That's all right if I pull this up a little bit but again I'd probably go something like Ektar here or contrast only because that contrast only gives you that nice kind of punch but it looks kind of filmic. Um, Portra, there we go. It does look a bit lo-fi but it really does um, look like film to me. That just really does remind me of film. This one's got a bit more punch to it but again trying to retain that softness the film had, adding that slight kind of grain. So let's look at this person here. That's 
so lo-fi. You know, see the very, very different colours there. If we go look at Ektar, it's going to look completely different again. Code of Colour Gold has a very, very different... So you've got like a range of things here to play with and as I say, use these as starting points. Um, what does Ektar look like here? Well, Ektar works quite nicely there. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put a bit of a vignette on there and then I'm going to push the exposure up a bit. So let's check out the original versus the new. Let's have a quick look at the, uh, the, the Pentax. So they seem to work all right. You know, they have their look. And let's look at it just on a slightly different kind of very boring, just a shot of a desk here. So, Ektar looks like it's shot on film. <laughs> That's the job. Architecture gives it a nice kind of punch, but not quite as much as our punch, which gives you more of a hit of color, really. Architecture dumbs it down a bit, but it gives you a lot of detail and sharpness. I really do like that Scala black and white. This is, I'm really quite happy with this one. So let's look at some of the wedding ones. We've got two black and whites and three colors, and these are based more on that kind of Instagram-y look, and it's less kind of about trying to emulate film, but more about being kind of kinder to skin tones. I'd be careful of black and white too, because, um, that can, it can work really well in some situations, but sometimes it can almost look a bit uh, infrared because it, it pulls the colors up so high. It, you know, it can look really flattering on skin tones, but sometimes you have to um, pull the exposure down a bit to compensate. I find, think black and white one is probably more of a, a workable one here. Now this kind of softens the top and bottom like that Instagrammy look kind of does. So let's start with, let's look at some wedding shots because that's what these are for. So this is uh, someone getting ready for a wedding, black and white one, a bit dark there, black and white two, there we go. That's a kind of nice black and white shot. Now color, kind of a sort of soft wedding-y look. And that one is a slight variant on that. And then three does the same, but isn't so harsh with the clipping of the lights and darks, but you still have quite a significantly different look to the original. Black and white one I think will work well here, that's nice. Black and white two, yeah that works quite well. Again, you'll see what I mean by the skin tones here, um, in that it just really kind of softens out everything. That Maybe that's not the best example. Wedding colour one. Two and three. Shot of her looking back just before she goes to the church. Wedding colour two is a bit bright here, that's what kind of what I mean. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a radial filter again, and I'm just going to draw attention to her eye by doing that. Uh, maybe black and white one might be good here. And just pull that. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's quite nice. Maybe this one. I think this is probably a case more for this one. And I'm just going to pull the white balance slightly over here. And I'm going to do another radial filter. That's kind of like where I like this shot. Um, I mean, that's a very big change for me, but that, that's, that now looks filmic to me. Whereas before, looks digital. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Ah, that's where I used to live in Chiswick, the high road, brilliant. I'd probably go somewhere like architecture for this. So you've immediately got crisper look to it. And again, when I'm doing stuff like this, I'll probably make it all look like that. If I do this, it suddenly looks like it was shot in the 80s or 90s or something. Right, let's look at this person getting ready in the morning on the bridesmaids. So what's going to work here? Wedding colour two, it's nice. Needs a bit of exposure boost. Um, black and white two. 
pull the exposure back down, it's going to work quite nicely. Black and white one, there we go, there's the real difference between black and white one and black and white two. The way it deals with the skin tones there, she's almost silhouetted there. And then here we have kind of a, a sort of smooth, sort of smooth out her skin. Now that looks a bit dark, but if we, if we pull that up, we can pull the blacks down just a little bit, just to give it a bit of punch. I think you want to be tweaking the white balance and the exposure mainly and always get that right before you add the preset. That's just the general rule for presets. These don't interfere with that because every photo is different. Each preset will act differently. Anyway, these are kind of where I normally start. My favorites are Architecture, Scala, Contrast Only and Ektar. And those are the ones I use most of all. So when you see my photos and you go, you show me how you process that, it's probably one of those that you're looking at. Occasionally I'll use um, a wedding one or something if I'm looking for a certain look. Again here, it's a little bit, just pull down that white balance a little bit. I, this is one of my favorite things to do in Lightroom is to just very subtly use the radial filter and give it like a, a complete maximum feather and just don't pull exposure more than a roundabout stop somewhere kind of about 0.8 to sort of 1.2 kind of area of a stop is a good place otherwise it becomes too noticeable but you can just sort of subtly draw your audience's attention to things i'll show you the before and the after you can now see the sort of the effect of that so that's basically an overview of my presets. Uh, I generally start with these and I might do more or less work depending on the job and the photograph. Um, there's no sort of one button fixes all solution, unfortunately, photography doesn't work like that. If you have any comments or questions, then please leave them down. I will try my best to answer them. So I'll see you next time.